two, here's my friend, good friend, Terry Berger, who uh, did this on vacation because I asked him to, and he was the, uh, the person who was best to do this podcast and this presentation. And uh, I also want to thank his incredible wife, Marcy, for allowing him to take 20 minutes, start a fire and uh, give us this presentation there on your vacation in the cabin. So I hope you guys are having a great time. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, Marcy. And uh, here we go. My name is Bill Allen, and I'm the leader of a group of elite house flippers and wholesalers called Seven Figure Flipping. We don't brag or show off our success, but instead let integrity and stewardship be our guide. We are dedicated to helping people unlock the freedom they desperately need. If you ask other real estate investors, they will say to keep your secrets quiet. But we believe in abundance, not scarcity. And that's why we are the elite. We are Seven Figure Flipping, and this podcast is our playbook. Well, thanks, Bill, for allowing me to pitch hit for you today. I'm super excited to do it. Bill knows I love to talk about real estate statistics and status of the market and those sorts of things. I'm up in the cabin in Blue Ridge, Georgia, with my wife spending a few days, and she's out there on the porch uh, working on a uh, Bible study or something, and we're going to have a fireside chat. Isn't this cool? Like, if you're watching this on YouTube or whatever, I got the fire going. It's a little toasty in here. I'm not going to lie. Um, but I want to jump in. State of the market in 2020. It's been crazy, right? Pandemic, all kinds of craziness going on, new president, all that stuff. I want to jump in, though, and, and share with you details specifically from our Seven Figure Altitude members. So Bill was asked to present to the Bruce Norris group. And if you don't know who Bruce Norris is, he's basically the guy that predicted the uh, California housing crash several years ago. <clears throat> and it was a giant thing. He was telling people about it. So now everybody listens to Bruce Norris. And Bill was asked to give a presentation with Bruce, asking to talk about the state of the market for flipping. And so Bill asked in the group, he said, will you guys please comment? What are you concerned about? What are your challenges? And how are you planning to kill it for 2021? So we're going to dive in and I'm going to talk about these comments. I'm going to read them to you. And then I'm going to give a little bit of commentary on them. So here we go. Let's jump in. Amanda Howell in Seven Figure Altitude says, we are getting houses around 45 to 60% of ARV. Flips are going great, except when we have seen delayed with lumber. Sometimes we have to drive to Wichita from Tulsa to get tongue and groove siding. There's huge price hikes on lumber. We're seeing tile shortages too with really basic tiles. They paid $200 for a $30 case of tile because we were short and already had it installed. Contractors are covered up and super busy. Shower door window installs are three weeks out. Structural companies are eight weeks out. Custom cabinets are three to six weeks out. Luckily, we have a solid base of contractors, so we have been lucky. But I know flippers who can't get work done for their projects. We've been under contract with end buyers on our last four flips within 24 hours and have received over asking price on every property except one. Also, multiple offers on houses once they hit the market. I had a house that was asking $211,000 for and it's under contract for two thirty. dollars Sorry for being all over the map, but hope that helps. Amanda, that does help because she talks about the good and the bad, right? The bad is uh, contractors, trying to find really good contractors. She mentions here that she has good contractors. Why? Well, my guess is that Amanda pays on time and she pays quick, right? So she pays fast and she pays on time and she treats her contractors well. Um, you know, maybe you should take your contractor to lunch or maybe you should buy a lunch for your contractors once a week. Do things that cause you to be at top of mind with your quality contractors so that they will work with you first. She mentioned that she knows flippers who can't get workers for their projects. Well, why is that? Well, if you're not, if you're not out there selling contractors on the value benefit of working for you versus working for somebody else, then you're going to have a hard time. Or if you have um, if you see your contractor as a second class citizens or below you or beneath you, no, no, they need to be part of your team. Uh, she talks about the, the lumber and you're going to hear this a lot. Construction materials are up and there's been some delays. Why? Well, I mean, you think about it. Some of these factories have shut down because of COVID or, or whatnot, and that's going to cause delays. Um, it's not that the shower doors and window installs are three weeks out because the contractor doesn't want to install them right? It's the factory can't produce the product fast enough. So that is Amanda's comment. I do like the fact that in her market, uh, she's getting multiple offers on most of her projects and they're selling for above ask. 
because all these problems that we mentioned earlier cause the hold times to do what? Yeah, they go up, they increase two, three, four weeks, okay? We're gonna talk about that uh, in a couple more comments here as well. Brandon Cobb in Middle Tennessee, here's what he says. In Middle Tennessee, the demand is crazy. All of our deals are going under contract within one week, about 25% of them going over asking price. We are having trouble with buyers, lenders, funding, appraising the deals in time, and most of our deals closing are getting pushed because of this. We have had trouble under the $225,000 price point with a lot of financing falling through. COVID has caused a lot of lenders to tighten up and we are feeling the effects. Lumber, lumber prices, here it is again, lumber prices hurt one of our new construction projects that didn't start before the hike. Subcontractor pricing is increasing. We are feeling it across the board. So let's talk about Brandon's situation, right? So he's, he's getting over asked. <clears throat> he's getting them under contract super fast. So that's good but he's carrying them longer. Now, he's carrying them longer, and I think Amanda ha and the rest of these comments are gonna have the same problem, right? The appraisals. What's going on with the appraisals right now? Well, number one, let's think about this for a second. The whole entire market because of the pandemic is experiencing super low inventory. In some markets, it's like weeks, two, three, four weeks um, uh, of inventory, which is causing a lot of chaos in the market. Appraisers that have been doing this game for a long time don't understand what is happening. So people in San Diego that see these huge price spikes or people in Miami or up on the East Coast, they, they get used to this kind of super high uh, price uh, inflection and then, then a, a big kind of valley. Well, in the nor more normal interior parts of the country, Appraisers just kind of go about their daily business. There's a three to 5% uptick in real estate prices by and large, and everything just kind of goes that way. Well, what you're seeing everywhere is this coastal price spike and the appraisers just don't know how to handle it. And then you see some appraisers that are like, well, I'm not putting my reputation on the line. I'm going to just appraise this thing what I think it's worth, right? And they have this, what I call this God complex, where the appraiser goes in there and they're going to appraise the, the property at a lower price because they feel like that's what it should be, right? And then you have other appraisers coming in that are gonna be up and down all over the board. They're, gonna, they're going with the market. They understand that their job is to follow the market and appraise the property for its value based on supply and demand, right? So you have, so you've got these two dichotomies, the God complex appraiser and the appraiser that kind of understands what their value is in the marketplace. And so that's why you're having problems with appraisals. They just haven't seen this type of thing before. And you have to do a lot of educating. So for example, with Brandon's deal, if I got three deals that went over asking, I'm gonna write a little letter to the appraiser and I'll let the appraiser know, hey, listen, I just want you to know, we put four flips on the market last month, three of them went over asking, um, and you're appraising this fourth one today. Uh, what I used to do uh, when I was an agent with the appraiser is I would put all the comps that I needed to make my case in a little envelope. And I put a little Starbucks gift card and a personal note. And you would be amazed at how that works. Hey, I know you're busy. Have your favorite beverage on me on your way uh, back to your next property. And uh, here are some comps. You don't need to use them if you don't want to. I'm sure you're gonna do the research, but if this saved you some time, I'm happy to do so. Okay, there's a little hack for you. Justin Dent Gentry, he talks about, he, this is his comment. We are selling everything we can get ready, usually before it's done at the very top of market. Inventory and interest rates are driving the market at an incredible pace. We're expecting to keep going like this for a while longer, but cautiously watching interest rates because that's going to cause things to slow back down at some point. We're not doing any new construction other than custom builds due to lumber prices. I really expect there are several buyers that have re-entered the existing market due to price hikes on the new construction side. We will. We still see a lot of custom builds happening though. We're not keeping as many rental properties because the prices are so inflated, it's awfully hard to pass up the fat payday right now. Challenges are lumber prices and just getting things closed and getting our jobs done on time. The title companies are overloaded, so it's dragging our closing times out. Our contractors are overloaded, so they're taking longer. Our goal right now is to make our money without having to do the full rehab if possible. We, we try to eliminate as much of the subcontractor timeline as possible. Oh my goodness, there are so many gold bombs in here. Let's just break them down one at a time, shall we? So 
selling everything we can get ready, usually before it's done in the very top of market. So Justin is taking the strategy of he's doing a flip, but he's putting that flip on the market before it's done. Kind of a smart play, right? You get a buyer that comes in, they wanna put it under contract. The challenge for that is dealing with that retail buyer um, going in your property all the time and super criticizing it, right? That's the one reason why we don't do it is I just don't want that buyer all over the house looking at exactly what's going on and micromanaging my team and my crew, wanting to pick paint colors, what can I pick, what can I pick? And so Justin sounds like he's got a pretty good plan for handling that, but that's exactly what he's doing. He also says they're watching the interest rates, right? These interest rates are actually driving the demand as well. So you've got the pandemic, people wanting their own kind of oasis, and then you also have these interest rates. I did a little study recently where I took a $400,000 house and a $320,000 house. The $400,000 house with a 3.25% interest rate over 30 years with a 5% down payment is going to yield a payment of like, I think it was $670, $1670 a month with principal interest taxes and insurance. Then I did the same study with a $320,000 house. So basically same house, but discounted 20% to kind of simulate what a market crash, a terrible market crash would do, right? $320,000 on the same house, but the rates were five and a half percent. Would you believe that the rate, the payment is actually higher on that $320,000 house at five and a half percent than it is on a $400,000 house at 3.25%. Pretty interesting. These interest rates are driving the market. All right, they're not doing any new construction. So Justin does some new builds other than custom home builds. Custom home builds, you have a buyer, they're designing their dream home, and what he's surprised at seeing is how many people are still building a custom home, probably because of the rates, to be honest with you. Uh, we're not keeping as many rentals, and I, I can't blame him, we're not either. It's really hard to pass up a really good payday on a flip in an inflated market when, you know, my time to buy rentals, I can buy rentals when, when the market is having a little bit of a challenge or a dip, However, it's a really great time to buy rentals because you're getting these insanely low rates. I mean, you get the same rates on Fannie Freddie financing. I had a rental property refinance quoted. It was like 3%. I was like, are you kidding me? I'm at 4.75 and I just refinanced that a year and a half ago. So 3% interest rates really expands that cash flow basis on a rental property. So be careful, right? You got to pay taxes on those fat paydays that Justin was talking about. So it might be good to not necessarily pay all those taxes, keep the equity, build your net worth, get a low interest rate and, and buy more rentals. He talks about lumber as well. We already covered that. Title companies are overloaded and that basically is the mortgage companies, right? A loan used to take 30 days to close and now it's taking 60 or 45. That's pushing our interest carry, our payments, all that stuff out at least one more month. The good news is, is that we're selling these houses for much more than we thought they would be worth. Um, let's see, oh, I like this one too. Our goal right now is to make money without having to do the full rehab. I talked earlier about the inventory being so low. When the inventory is low, people are more willing to accept painted cabinets versus brand new cabinets. Does that make sense? So if you're a house flipper out there, you might be able to go in and do a, you know, a flip hack where you're basically saying, I'm not gonna put a brand new kitchen in here. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna make it nice. I'm gonna paint it. I'm gonna put some trendy cedar shelves in or do whatever, but I'm not going to put a brand new kitchen in this time. Mainly because kitchens are four to six weeks out. I can get this thing on the market and probably sell it for the same price. That's a really good one. Uh, Elizabeth Druther in our group talks about this. She says, our market has moved from a seller's market to an inventory shortage. We are also moving away from new construction to the, due to the increase in lumber prices. People should be aware that lead times for roofing windows are fourfold what they were before COVID in her market. You must be proactive about having all your material orders in, in advance to keep the job moving. Subcontractors and vendors have only gotten busier during the pandemic, which continues to drive the demand and therefore you need to create your budget accordingly. Elizabeth, this is like solid gold right here. Like she just nailed it. You have to be organized. You have to prepare. So if you're gonna close in three weeks and you know you're buying this house for a flip, I would get that stuff, the materials ordered three weeks ahead of time 
uh, Tyler Jensen, you know, king of the seven day flip. He actually has pods on his property uh, that he just moves everything into and then he pulls them out as he needs them. And that might be a, a strategy that we all need to go to um, because of the inventory shortage. Um, lead times. Why? Why are the lead times like roofing windows four, four times longer than they used to be before COVID? I mean, it's the same reason that uh, remember if you heard the story about the meatpacking plant, right? Meat prices were rumored to go through the roof because the meat packers were sick and they weren't coming to work. And if they're not coming to work, what well, doesn't get packed? Meat. And if meat doesn't get packed, what happens? It goes, it doesn't get to the grocery store, which creates supply and demand issues, especially for people that are, are, are bunkering down in their houses. Okay, so you've got to be proactive. Glenn Williams, Glenn Williams, uh, he, this is what he says. We're really focusing on becoming exceptional at what we do. We're compressing timelines, reducing rehabbing costs, getting better funding options to reduce hold costs. We're making it so we can make an extra 10K or more on every project just because we're doing the business better. In general, things here move really fast, just like other markets. In the actual city of Minneapolis, we are seeing an increase in inventory and people doing some price reductions. So that's interesting, right? So we're watching that closely. We're not seeing that in the suburbs around Minneapolis, though. We're bu still buying everything that we can make that we can that makes sense. Just continuing to add more widgets to our rehabbing conveyor belt. And if you know anything about Glenn, he's a data junkie and he's constantly refining his process. And I love the fact that he's basically saying I'm focusing during this crazy time on becoming exceptional about what we do, trying to compress timelines when everybody else's timelines are expanding trying to reduce rehabbing costs when everybody else has seemed to be going up. It is interesting, I mean, in the, uh, the political climate, uh, we've had uh, some issues in the city of Minneapolis, right, in recent months. And I think that's fascinating that they're seeing an increase in inventory in the urban core, um, but the suburbs are not, are, are being resilient and the market is still very strong there. That's, could unpack that for two or three hours, honestly. Uh, let's talk about what Todd Jones has to say. Todd says, the seller's market is here. We're very low inventory, lots of competition on the buying end. The plan is more marketing, focusing on faster rehabs to help reduce potential risk if things turn around. Now, this is the second or third time we've talked about risk. Let's keep going here. I've shifted the scope of work for most projects. Before, every house was getting almost everything new, and now that's no longer the case. I'm doing less work and cutting corners and making the same profit in the end especially with order, special orders that now have delays such as windows. If the market does flip, and, and that's when I'm going to look to build up my rental portfolio. I'll also continue to flip, uh, uh, flip such as when many people stopped when COVID first hit. As before, I'll buy conserva conservatively. So what Todd's saying is some flippers, when the pandemic started, they stopped buying. But Todd basically was more aggressive in his buying. So when the pandemic hit in March, you know, there was that little bit of dip in the real estate market. Our team and many teams in subject or altitude basically said, we're going to start buying 10% cheaper instead of 70% minus cost of repairs, for example, we're going to go lower. We're going to go 60% minus the cost of repairs. And we got some really great deals uh, and it looked like magical deals now because the market kind of continued to skyrocket when we thought it might make a shift in the other direction. Um, you know, now I know Todd, he doesn't cut corners, but I see what he's saying here. He's basically saying the same concept that Justin did. I'm not putting in new new kitchens anymore. I'm, I might just save the windows and not put new windows in because I don't have to to sell it, number one. And number two, it's going to slow me down. I just want to get this back on the market. And if you think about it, windows, you know, it's nice to have new windows, but unless it's absolutely required in your market, you're spending a lot of money on on stuff that... It's, it's not gingerbread, you know? When I was a new construction agent, I had a builder that spent all his money on the gingerbread. And then I had another builder who was like this engineer type. He did all the spray foam behind the walls, all this crazy stuff, you know, that you couldn't see. The gingerbread houses always sold for a higher price than my friend who built this incredibly solid house. But um, people just didn't really appreciate it except the detail-oriented people like engineers and CPAs that came into the house. Um, Gingerbread is what's important. All right, let's see if we got one more here. Nope, I think that wraps it up. So you got some good gold bombs here, hopefully in this podcast. And I'm here to tell you, it's really important to keep your eye on the ball. 
And when I say keep your eye on the ball, that means all the balls. Contractors, treat your contractors with great respect, pay them on time. Still negotiate with them. If you pay them on time, you can still negotiate good prices with them. Why? Because they like you. And if a contractor likes working for you, they're gonna prioritize you over people who would pay them more. Okay, uh, second thing is, increase your, your time, your costs when you make offers, increase those lead times out. So I know houses are selling faster than ever, but your carrying costs could go up because the lending criteria is taking, instead of 30 days, it's taking 60 days. You need to budget your renovations at a higher amount. Honestly, we're raising our, uh, we basically run our renovation costs like we normally do, then we add 25% just so we can have a little bit of flex room with the price of lumber, or if it's hard to get windows, or we have to pay more for something that kind of catches us by surprise. So anyway, Bill, I wanna thank you for letting me fill in here. I hope you've enjoyed our fireside chat. It looks like my fire has gone out over here uh, in our cabin, but uh, it's been an honor serving you guys today. I hope you picked up some gold bombs. And listen, if you need anything, make sure you reach out to us at Seven Figure Flipping. Um, and uh, we we'll look forward to talking to you soon. All right, there you guys go. Some incredibly valuable tips from some high-level house flippers all around the country. So these are flippers from um, all over, from the East Coast, West Coast, uh, Midwest, everywhere in between that have shared some incredible stuff for you. So hopefully you got some information there that can help you inside your business. And hopefully you got a little taste of what it's like behind the scenes inside of our Seven Figure Altitude membership. This is just one of you know, thousands of posts that go on in there every year. Um, it's probably five to 10 posts a day, uh, people answering, responding. And that's just a little bit of information inside three hours. That post blew up. A lot of more people uh, have responded since then, have answered questions, and have gone back and forth talking about it. And this is the power in numbers. This is the power of getting around a mastermind group. So hopefully it was valuable for you. Uh, I know that I got a lot out of it, a lot of insight in what's currently going on in today's market. And that stuff changes on a regular basis, doesn't it? Every month, every couple months, you see differences, changes. And if you're in tune with the market, if you've got the pulse of what's going on around the country, it's going to help you where you are.